Right, okay, so we're back for episode two of the Wavy Dynamics Insights, and I'm here again with Mike Law to talk about another area of vehicle dynamics. So I hope you enjoyed the previous episode and will enjoy this one. Um, so today we're gonna to focus on role centers and their influence on performance, which um, is a pretty contentious subject, right? Role centers have uh, seem to have a lot of different opinions and um, you know everyone has their own concepts of how important they are. But ultimately, um, the role center, from my understanding, and please um, you know, chip in with yours if it differs, but the role center for me is the area, um, it's kind of like an imaginary point within the chassis at which the forces um, in, or the lateral forces from the tires are communicated to the body. So it's a little strange to get your head around, um, or it was certainly for me, but is that effectively your understanding too, Mike? So I suppose the way I think about roll centers is, well, first of all, that they're, they're, they're not the point that the car rolls around. Yes. Uh, which, which is, uh, which will be something completely different. Yeah. Uh, but there, it's a useful metric that you can use to measure the, the, the qualities of a, of a suspension system. Uh, and it, and it falls out, uh, from the, the camber gain on your suspension. Yeah. And uh, what I've always called the, the lateral derivative, which is how much the, the wheel is moving laterally in bump and rebound. And, and those two things together combine to, to give uh, what, what, uh, what we call the roll center. Uh, yeah. And there, there are also, I think, various ways of expressing this. You know, you can have uh, roll centers, uh, four space roll centers. Uh, hmm. And they all have slightly different definitions, but all largely amount to, uh, amount to the same thing. And it, it's 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 kind of as you describe how the lateral forces uh, generated by the tires uh, appear in uh, react into the chassis, uh, and and how you should expect the chassis to respond. Yeah, and they have an important influence in performance um, in one aspect because they um, kind of change how the weight transfer happens around the car, right? So this is something which I see as uh, the geometric weight transfer element and the um, elastic weight transfer element. And the roll center has an important interplay into the per relative percentages of these. So we'll typically report the roll center height relative to the ground and this is something that defines the ratio of, of sprung to unsprung weight transfer on the axle in, in question. Yes. So a, right. a, a roll center at the height of your car CG means that all the weight transfer happens through the wishbones. Conversely, if your roll center is at the ground level, that means all your weight transfer is going through the springs and the dampers. And because those springs need time to, to settle in a corner in order to transfer any force, uh, the, any weight transfer that happens through these is typically much slower than what you have through the wishbones, uh, which react the load very quickly. So you can think of it as having a similar effect to, to increasing your, your anti-roll bar stiffness on that axle in that mm. a, a higher roll center for the same Stiffness means more weight transfer on that axle, uh, and it means you uh, remove, uh, therefore removing grip from from that axle in order to use it on the other one. Yeah, and to expand on that a little bit, I've experienced. Um, you know, if you if you have your roll center at center of um, gravity height or center of mass height, you can then use um, lower spring stiffness because you're, um, you're having to react less roll moment and that, I mean, by spring stiffness, I mean anti-roll bars and for the road springs. But it then um, creates quite a harsh environment for the tire, right? In the sense that so, the, of um, contact patch load variations. So you're absolutely right that if you increase your, your roll center height and you increase your, your weight transfer that's happening through the wishbones, that means to arrive at the same roll angle as you did before, you need a uh, lower roll stiffness on that axle. 
and that can definitely be, be a good thing if you're, you're driving over a, a warped track surface. Uh, because it, it means you will be able to keep all four tires oper you know in, in a in a with a good amount of vertical load uh, even though you're you, you're still able to maintain sort of lowish roll angles mm. in terms of uh, the negatives of that direction then uh, I think you know you're you're right to talk about the the kind of the speed of the weight transfer but and and again, it, it largely comes back to the, uh, the, uh, the the cars that you're dealing with, you know, in, in the softly sprung, uh, you know, sort of stadium truck or uh, off road type scenario, you could you could probably find that uh, that weight transfer quite jarring, uh, makes will make the car feel quite stiff and reactive. Mm. But in uh, in your your kind of formula car example. Or, or your sports prototype, my expectation is that you'll probably struggle to tell the difference between mm. uh, weight transfer tra and through the springs. Uh, those cars tend to be stiff enough anyway that, yeah. that I suspect you won't be able to tell the difference. The, the other negative of having a high roll center is a, a phenomenon called jacking. Uh, and this comes about because as you have weight transfer across an axle during cornering, your outside tire start uh, produces is producing more lateral force than your inside tire. And now we can refer to what what I uh, think of as the as the scissors analogy. Uh, if you uh, have if you're if you've got a, a difference in force between your uh, your two tires and therefore uh, your your two handles in a pair of scissors, then this has the act of squeezing these together, and and the joint in the scissor, in your scissors will move vertically uh, upwards. In the case of a car with with a roll center above the ground, uh, and this, as we we maybe touched on in the last episode, this might act to take you away from your your optimal aero condition in the aero map. So, so that could be. Um, like a, a f again a first order effect of jacking you know you're moving into the wrong place in the error map what are the second and you know, maybe following third order effects of jacking I guess there would be a small effect of you know if you're raising the center of mass um, by having high jacking forces then you're going to increase weight transfer mid corner which can be quite interesting as well uh, yeah it's um, I think it's it's reasonably second order. Yeah, I think, I think the effect absolutely. You, there's there there aren't many times in a lap where you want to raise the center of mass, mm -hmm. uh, and and those jacking forces are, are contributing to that. Yeah. But for all but the uh, the craziest suspension designs, I think that's that's all pretty manageable. Yeah, I think the other thing I would raise about the your high roll center is it removes some opportunity to manipulate the balance of the car by varying your your roll stiffness front to rear. So as, as we kind of touched on before, if you've got a roll center at the height of the CG and all of your lateral weight transfer is, is happening through the wishbones, stiffening or softening an anti-roll bar on that axle Will do nothing to affect the handling of the car because because it's not taking any force during cornering. Yeah. So by kind of depowering your internal suspension, you're just taking away another tool that you have to uh, to uh, to modify the handling. Now, unless of course you you also have the ability to to modify roll centers through different pickup points or something like that. Yeah. Right. And that is something that you do see on um, sports cars and um, yeah, even GT cars as well. And f for example, in GT3, that's something you can play around with. I think also important is the, so we talk about roll centers, which is, is something we can look at from the front view, but in the side view of the vehicle. So it, if you imagine looking at the vehicle, um, you know, side on, we also have um, the pitch centers which is, it follows an, the exact same co um, concept, right? And that's what you're manipulating with anti-dive and anti-squat. 
Um, so everything we've said just now about the roll centers in the front view also applies, you know, when you're looking at um, pitching moments of the sh or pitching movements of the chassis. Um, so I think I, I have an illustration that I can throw up to demonstrate that anyway. So interestingly, uh, something to note about roll centers is that I guess in all race cars, all effective race cars, you have the, the roll center lower than the center of gravity. Um, but conversely, you could, or you do technically have the design freedom to place it above the center of mass, which would then make the car roll into the corner rather than out. But it goes back to what we were saying about jacking. Um, the jacking forces there would be super high. And um, yeah, any potential gain, well, I'm not really sure there would be so much of a gain. It would be um, outweighed. Yeah, I think you're right. And I think it also comes back, I think, to the, you know, the fundamentals, what defines the roll centre uh, in terms of camber change with bump and uh, the, the lateral derivative of the tyre. Mm. So if, if you uh, increase the roll centre height with, with the camber change with bump, then uh, maybe that's just, that's too much for, uh, for the tyres or, uh, or maybe if you know there's some series that have limits on the amount of, of camber that, uh, that that you can run means you're you're setting up a, a, an unreasonable amount of camber mm. uh, and then w when it comes to the lateral derivative so the uh, as you as you increase this you will introduce a lot of scrubbing and slip yes uh, onto the tire as you go over a bump and, and again, this this isn't such a, a, a problem with a a very stiff, you know, uh, uh, aerodynamically focused car, but it's certainly something you know your off road vehicles would would struggle to accept. So uh, another, I'd say, minor consideration that you you want to keep track of as well is is just how your roll center is moving uh, vertically in different cornering conditions. Uh, it doesn't stay in one place. Uh, it, it can move up and down, and then this is especially true if you've got unequal length wishbones on, on a particular axle. Uh, if your car's got a lot of downforce, uh, it can often mean your roll centre height in high speed, uh, when the car is quite low, is, is a lot different to, to what it is in low speed. Uh, and actually, it can be useful uh, to use this uh, property for tuning the balance of your car, and it's, it's definitely something some engineers can get quite excited about but for me there are there are stronger ways of controlling the balance high to low speed that, that are more powerful than, than manipulating the roll center height yeah okay so just elaborating on that a little bit more so um this is talking about the i guess when the the aerodynamic load um reduces the ride height of the car with high, at high speed you're essentially articulating the suspension right and by doing that, you change the relationship of the roll center height relative to the center of mass. Um, so then you're kind of changing the, the balance of um, roll stiffness between the axles according to your speed, right? Yeah, exactly. I think, as I say, it's, it's definitely something uh, some engineers uh, pay a lot of attention to. I yeah. think my advice would be uh, not to stray too far from your ideal design in pursuit of that property mm. uh, if you um you know if, if you find it's it's built into your suspension uh, and it's it's not giving you a design things that you can do that overcome that relatively small effect that bring mm. your balance back to where you want it to be yeah i guess the tendency would be to introduce a little understeer with speed uh, yeah, it, it depends on on which axle you're you're doing it on, and also yeah. uh, the the direction that it goes. It's it's perfectly possible to have a uh, a, a suspension system that that increases uh, roll center height relative to the CG as you go uh, as you go into bump, so into your mm. high speed case, mm. and vice versa. You can you can design a suspension that achieves either. So I guess the other other things or ways of doing that. For me, jump out as you know, changing the, the aerodynamic, um, you know, making sure the center of pressure moves in a way you'd want it to. Yeah, and and this is this is what your vehicle simulation is for. 
Yeah. Uh, it, uh, as you say, you know, manipulating stiffnesses uh, m- changes your positions in the aero map yeah. for uh, uh, your different cornering conditions. Yeah. Uh, and this is something that can be quite powerful. Yeah, it, it's possible to to achieve, uh, you know, the different weight transfer characteristics. Uh, well, to be honest, probably not something I should think about. Uh, I should talk about, to be honest. <laughs> it, it, does, it, it treads uh, pretty closely on what, what we're doing in F1. But yeah, you, there are other ways of manipulating the um, uh, the weight transfer from high to low speed. Uh, without worrying too much about roll centers, but may probably not something for this episode. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so tying that all together, um, in a generalized sense, what would your um, preferred approach be to designing the kinematics of the suspension to place the roll centers? Um, do you tend to prefer having them closer to the center of mass or closer to the ground plane? So as, as we discussed, it, it largely depends on on the application. With the you know the very stiff uh, formula cars, a lot of it can actually uh, depend on what your your target roll angles through a, a corner can be, and that will influence both your your sort of aerodynamic pres- uh, aerodynamic platform presentation, and then also how your your tires are presented relative to the road. And if that's something that's going to be critical to your lap time, then you can you can choose a roll center that that suits suits that. Uh, similarly, if the the tracks that you're driving on have a lot of warp to them, so you can think of circuits like uh, Bathurst or, or Monaco or, or uh, the corkscrew in in Laguna Seca, uh, mm. those are times where you're going to want to keep your roll stiffness quite low. But you also don't want to give up your your aerodynamic presentation or your uh, or your tire presentation. So you, you might value a high roll center in in that situation, but at the same time, that's gonna that's gonna give you some some jacking, uh, and that's and those that's something you're you're gonna have to deal with another way. Yeah. Uh, similarly, if the another aspect can be if. If you want to run at incredibly high roll stiffness, then uh, dropping your roll center means uh, you're going to increase your your sort of sprung weight transfer, and uh, and actually, if uh, yeah, again, maybe that's not something to talk about, mm. but uh, <laughs> you can, you know, very high roll stiffness. If you've got if you've got compliance in your suspension dropping the roll center is going to mean uh you, you can't you can't reach a, as high a roll stiffness conversely if, if you're expecting your car to run very soft in bump and in ride then a low roll center is is going to reduce the amount of camber change that you get uh, through bump uh, although this is something you can deal with relatively independently uh, and that might just that might mean a, a more consistent delivery of tire grip uh, as you as you ride over big bumps. Mm-hmm. Similarly, you're not going to experience that that lateral scrubbing effect that you can you can get with a high roll center, uh, and hopefully it, it helps to deliver a a more consistent level of tire grip as the suspension is is going a long way through its travel. And you know all the all the kinematic changes that that you get because of that. Yeah. So as ever, vehicle dynamics is a story of compromises and you know trying to juggle a lot of pieces and make sure they land in the right place together is key to a, a, a performing car, I suppose. So yeah, interesting. Um, why don't we move into Q and A? I got a couple of questions around um, roll centers yesterday, so. Some of them we've touched on a little bit already today, but one I got from um, Mohammed Musa, nine four eight, is uh, how bad of an idea would it be to set the roll center to make the car roll towards the corner? Yeah, so again, I think it's it, it's kind of depending on your application. If, if that was your only objective, then 
absolutely what what you'd get would would achieve that yeah. uh, and that you know that might be desirable for uh, for one reason or another i mean maybe if you wanted to uh ensure a level uh aerodynamic platform or a you know just a level ride as you go around corners that that effect is going to undo some of what you get from from tire squash uh, and maybe you can you can maintain a you know a, a very flat uh, a very fat chassis through a, a corner but i think that the compromises that we'll find are, are pretty bad so uh, we, we've t- talked about jacking uh your as you raise the roll center that high you're going to end up with a, a huge amount of, of jacking that goes into the chassis and the uh, the wheels are going to sort of squeeze together through the corner the uh, the other aspects is probably you know as as we've touched on the uh, the camber change or the the lateral scrub of the uh, tire as you go through a corner with that particular geometry you're going to find um, a lot of the you know it's 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 a pretty inconsistent uh, presentation of the tire but also that's that's going to happen over bumps as well so if if your suspension is you're going to find a, either a lot of camber change or a lot of, of lateral scrub in the tire, and all that's just going to lead to to a feeling of inconsistency in the uh, in the load of the tire over bumps. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I I've never really I don't think I've seen a car that behaves like that. Uh, but <laughs> not in a race track <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, I think I think while it while it sounds nice to be able to design design a suspension where the chassis leans into the corner i think that's that's probably the only positive you'll achieve with pushing too far in that direction yeah yeah okay um the other question we had was um with roll being bad for aero is the benefit of increasing roll to improve mechanical grip uh, and that's from david aka csm13 so it's not uh, ro- roll angle isn't just bad for aero it's also bad for the tire presentation that's unless you've got extremely high uh, camber change with bump, you're you're going to end up with a uh, with less negative camber during cornering than you have uh, in in your static condition. Uh, so that's also a a, a big penalty for uh, having a low roll stiffness and therefore high roll angles. But I think you're you're right that the uh, there is a benefit in in ride performance from being able to run at a lower roll stiffness. Uh, but also we've touched on the idea of warp track surfaces uh, where, you know, in, in circuits where the roll angle at the f- uh, front axle can often be very different to the roll angle at the rear axle. Uh, it's, it's a benefit to have low roll stiffness and keep all four tires in contact with the road surface at all times. Otherwise you, you can get some pretty ugly uh, ride modes and uh, mm. you, you don't deliver uh, all the uh, tire potential that you, you could have if you run at, at higher roll stiffness. Yeah. I think the, the low roll stiffness is, is um, particularly good for, for curbing events where you're, uh, where you're contacting the curb uh, on one side of the car only. Uh, being able to run lower roll stiffness in, in that situation is, is a positive. Uh, but yeah, it's for for other aspects of grip like the tire presentation. I, I wouldn't say the the roll stiffness is particularly beneficial. The lower roll stiffness is particularly beneficial. Cool, nice. So I think that probably concludes um, what we want to say about roll centers today. Um, I'm sure there's another half hour's worth of, of stuff to talk about there, but maybe getting into detail that um, you know we want to keep this a bit light. So cool. Thanks again for joining us, Mike. Um, That was uh, another interesting discussion and certainly I and I'm sure the viewers will benefit a lot from your wisdom. So, nice one. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, Also, I did want to say, as we talked about earlier a little bit, Mike actually has a book and uh, I have a copy here, which I've been reading. But it's called Ace Thinking and it's not about, um, it's not directly about vehicle dynamics, but 
what it is covering is the general approach to engineering, um, some of which you've experienced through Mike's words today. So if any of you are interested in um, not so much the technical side of engineering um, and uh, you know working in high performance engineering environments, but more so the approach to problems and how to frame problems in order to um, arrive at the best solutions, check out the book. It's called Ace Thinking and you, you'll find it on Amazon and all those kind of other places. So. Yeah, just wanted to give you some um, some some flowers before we close today. Important to say as well about the book is that all the proceeds from book sales are going to the Small Peace Charity, Small Peace Trust. Um, so, Mike, if you want to tell us a little bit about what that is. Yeah, so it's an organisation that I benefited a lot from uh, when I was just starting out in engineering. Uh, they run a scholarship scheme uh, through A-levels targeted towards uh, potential uh, future leaders in, in engineering. And uh, my hope is, is that by donating the, the profits from the book, uh, we can uh, you know, further encourage uh, more uh, talented young engineers into our industry and uh, use that to help solve all of the world's problems. That's a nice cause to um, you know, be giving to and I think as we progress in our careers we do have a duty to to look behind us and make it a bit easier for those coming up that's certainly something I'm trying to do um, as I move forward so yeah nice one so let's wrap this up and we'll be back again soon um, with our third episode which is around the myth of chassis torsional stiffness so I'm quite excited to get into that one and um, yeah we'll be back soon thanks <laughs>